So I was asked to talk about restricted material and I'm, I'm happy to share what I know, what I've heard about that particular aspect of the Dharma. And I think it's really important because um, it seems to be there's some misunderstanding about the difference between Sutra and Tantra and then higher categories of Tantra. If Dharma belongs to the category of Sutra, such as the Tripitaka, or also biographies that are not secret biographies, then that kind of material is certainly not restricted. But anything that belongs to the category of Tantra, particularly Maha Anuttara Yoga, Maha Mudra, Maha Sandhi, then restricted means that um, the individual who's interested needs to connect to the lineage. And the way to connect to the lineage is to meet a genuine master. And the way to know how to meet a genuine master is to understand what those qualifications are. And so it really involves study and hearing and learning. And that's why all of us, when we begin in Buddha Dharma, we really should start on a basic level to learn, you know, gather general information to learn how it is that you approach the path. So then one understands that this information is not being held privately or secretly because someone's trying to hide something or that it's, you know, some kind of esoteric um, situation whereby, you know, certain people aren't qualified to, to know it for the wrong reasons, but that in fact there are prerequisites and it has to do with lineage and the blessings of the sacred transmission. So meeting the master and understanding what those qualifications are, and then receiving empowerment, abhisheka, then receiving reading transmission, and that's called lung in Tibetan. It's also an area that a lot of people don't understand. They think it might not be important. In fact, reading transmission is very important. There's three. There's empowerment, abhisheka, reading transmission, and then liberating commentary, those three. So reading transmission means that you simply need to hear the sound of the words for that particular dharma. And you don't need to understand the meaning of the words, but you hear the sound of the words which carry the authentic blessings of the lineage. And you might ask, well, wouldn't I hear the sound of the words when I receive the commentary on that particular tantra or text? You do, but it's incomplete because the commentary, oftentimes when given by teachers to disciples, not every single word is read. And it's hard to you know, make sure that it would be a word-for-word -word commentary. If it is, in that case, then yes, the reading transmission is received. But if not, then it becomes necessary to also receive that too. So during the course of the commentary, that's when you are uh, given the instructions on how to understand the genuine meaning of that particular level of Dharma instruction. And so what makes it restricted is that these three aspects need to be present, empowerment, reading transmission, and liberating instruction from a qualified, genuine master, um, then it's no longer restricted. Then it's up to you as a recipient, as a student, or as a devoted disciple to begin practicing and learning and internalizing that Dharma. Yeah, the greatest danger is one that faces both master and disciple, and it's called inappropriately exposing secret or sacred, sometimes the word sacred is better than secret, because secret can be misunderstood, inappropriately exposing sacred material. And it's a, a root downfall in um, Vajrayana Buddhism. It's a, it's a root uh, samaya, and if it's broken, that's a downfall, and it's a serious situation. It's serious because um, of the sacredness of the three aspects of the tradition, empowerment, reading transmission, and liberating commentary, because that makes the blessing 
of the lineage complete. And oftentimes this is hard for Westerners to understand because blessing is not a tangible thing. It's not a material thing. It's something that comes through faith and devotion. And so through that level of connection, the only way to connect with that is through those three aspects. Master, disciple with faith and devotion, and then the tradition, meaning empowerment, transmission, and teachings. Or if it's upadesha, then upadesha instructions, pointing out instructions, which is on you know, even a higher category, which comes after you receive those three aspects. So to try to learn that material without any of that in place means there's no blessing. And in a way you could say, well, so what? What's the danger? Well, the danger is that then this sacred tradition's heritage begins to be broken down, like pouring water into pure cream. And over time, you know, it, it means that um, things become more degenerate. But I think the, the greatest danger is that, and danger is the wrong word, um, misfortune is that the disciple will never be able to make progress on that path. And yet if everything is complete, that is a path that delivers liberation, even in a single lifetime. So to compromise it is not a good idea, especially now in the degenerate times, because the tendency right now is to compromise it for many other reasons. But I think we have to stay completely focused on our heritage, what we've inherited, and try to continue to maintain the purity of that. There's really no other way.